Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? I'm here with Daylon Mac, here to talk about his widely requested deck that he took to Nats. Uh, we call it Broly Leader Lock. So, Daylon, introduce yourself and uh, tell us like where this deck came from. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Daylon. Um, people don't know I play. Uh, I'm a football player for the Baltimore Ravens, and I, um, I play. I also play Dragon Ball Super. So, uh, but this deck came from. Um, can't take all the credit. Uh, this deck came from uh, Peter Katani, so I was talking about him, um, talking to him about like what deck he was gonna take to the event, and he was like, starter deck Broly or Shenron, and uh, I was like, starter deck Broly. And I was like, he's like, yeah, let me show you this effect. So he kind of showed me this uh, this leader lock play that you could do with uh, the um, overwhelming energy Broly and the the um, Broly demonic intimidation. And uh, all you all you needed was a Paragus and like the seven drop yellow Broly, and you could like lock your leader out. So um, it really caught my attention. And uh, without any practice with the deck, I ended up taking it to Nats. So. And how did your uh, how did your matchups go? Uh, so my matchups. Um, first round, I played Shenron. That was that was what I was hoping to play. Um, I was expecting to play a, a lot more than I did, but. Um, that that game was very very free um so i won the die roll so it was like literally just so easy and um i was able to turn two um i was able to lock him out where he couldn't awaken and i was able to keep his leader on like the front side and uh he was very frustrated he was like wow round one of nats and i'm already playing a rogue leader <laughs> and i was like i you know i don't know if it's rogue but i could definitely understand you not <laughs> preparing to to play against this type of deck so and then uh, uh, Janemba too was like another matchup that uh, like was really good for this deck, right? Because it used to be like this deck can almost never beat Janemba. Now it's like completely opposite, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, being able to lock the leader out where they can't swing or draw cards um, was like really, really effective. Um, unfortunately, like I didn't play any in the tournament, but I kind of just like kind of theory tested against it and. Uh, just about like how quick I could get the, uh, the, the um, leader lock play out, and uh, it was it, it was very effective. It was very effective. So if I would have ran into Janemba, I don't know how free the matchup would have been because of the leader lock play. Because like I know uh, Pat O'Neill was playing like a spicy spicy Janemba uh, build, um, so I don't know how free the matchup would have been. But I, I, I'm guessing it would have been a, a lot more easier than it, it than it once was. All right, so real quick for everyone, let me read what the new cards do. So, like, I think everyone kind of knows what Starter Broly does, but the leader lock is the new part. So, let me read those real quick. So, we have Overwhelming Energy Broly, Double Strike, Auto, not really relevant for this leader. But when you play this card and your leader card is a Green Freeze Army, if there are three or more battle cards in your battle area, draw until you have six cards in your hand. The important part is the Activate Main for one green. Place this card in your owner's drop area. Choose up to one Broly BR with energy cost of seven and play it from your hand. So this doesn't specify like any color. So you can play the green one from the structure deck or you can play Broly Demonic Intimidation, which uh, reads as follows. So the important part is the activate main once per turn, choose one card from your hand, place it in the drop area, choose one of your opponent's cards in rest mode and that card can't be switched to active mode until the end of your opponent's next turn. So you just go up the normal Broly chain. So you have like your one drop Broly Unrealized Ambition, you go up to your four drop and then you could pop your four drop, which goes into the new six drop Broly. And then the, that six drop Broly will go into the um, demonic intimidation. So you can do that as early as turn two. So uh, just a few questions here. So like, was this the main play of the deck or was it just the, the main play in certain matchups? Because I noticed you only played two overwhelming energy Broly. So did you ever feel like you needed more or was that kind of just like a, a play for certain matchups? Um, I don't think I don't think I needed more because uh kind of all you need is um, just the seven drop and um, you just need the Paragus. So Paragus is able to search it out. Um, I guess you would need the four drop as well, to have the four drop as well. Um, I know that kind of sounds clunky, but like you actually, it's actually really not that clunky. Cause like you see so many cars on the, on the turn where you go up like the chain and do all that stuff. So, and if not, I mean, you're still on like your regular Broly chain and that's fine. But um, I was able to pull it off every time I played Shinron matchups, which is twice. Um, I played it, I played um, one round one and run round two, but the round two matchup was against Machado who actually like, 
knew about the deck, so it was not that effective. And it was effective, but um, he had he, he like he side decked out to it, so like he was playing Dragon Radar. So um, game one he was able to like search out his last like last Dragon Ball, whereas game two like I ended up locking him and winning the game. It was still very close though because he just knew how to like play against the deck. Gotcha. And then a few other like tech questions. So Tragic Awakening, like, so the thing with this deck is like typically it loses very hard to removal. Like even your uh, seven drop yellow broly, like if that gets removed, you can be in like maybe a little bit of trouble. So did you ever feel like you needed the fourth one or was three like always the perfect number? Uh, I thought three was the perfect number. Um, I kind of went back and forth with it though, because like once your chain gets, like you said, once your chain gets interrupted, you're kind of like in a lot of trouble. Um, but I think I think three was the perfect number. Uh, I, I went back and forth over it though, like taking out a shocking death ball, which I probably I don't know if I would have still done take, took out a shocking death ball, but I could probably see it happening because my chain like. Against um, against the Meager, that matchup is so hard because uh, he he basically always has Banisher Fu, right? And that card alone just like does so much like damage to my deck. So probably probably would have got a fourth one in there if I could. I just I just thought I was really gonna um, need the Shocking Death Balls because like aggro matchups and things like that. Yeah, I get that. It seems like really good against things like Demi Graf for sure. And then uh, the one Crusher Ball. So this is a card that I, I haven't seen played in any list for a while now. So why did you decide to include the one in the main deck? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need I needed one more yellow card because uh, I did, and I didn't want to just play one Roshi. So I was like, uh, let me find like another like counterplay. And uh, Crusher Ball seemed like seemed like a really good card to have. So I decided to use that. No, it seems good. I mean, it's either that or like Mutaito, but Mutaito is kind of like dead in a decent amount of matchups, so like especially ramp. So I can definitely see that being being the case. Yeah, um, I just didn't think, and over the weekend, Mutaito like would have never been, would have never came up and just like been a broken card for me. I, I guess what what does it do? It taps a card that's greater than your energy. Yeah, it, uh, it basically Crusher Ball is anything ignoring barrier if it's greater than your opponent's energy. So, like, it would be relevant against, like, Toa, I guess. Um, maybe, Ooh, like, regular Shenjita. Yeah, it actually probably would have been relevant against uh, Broly Apes. But I feel like I have a good matchup against that already. Yeah, I kind of feel like with anything with, like, Yellow Broly, you kind of just, like eat them alive because they're eating their own life and then you're also dealing a lot of damage to them early like how are the yellow broly matchups for this deck so i played uh one um one u6 kappa and that matchup was kind of free shocking death ball just like put in work he kind of just ended his turn so like he basically would pay like the uh he would play the uh two drop sisterly mons take a life and then he'd go into the uh other the two drop Khalifa that takes life and like rest one of my energy but like i really wouldn't care because i'd have like enough cards to like do the sparking negate anyways and uh once he swung with the sisterly bonds so he, and i like i just took a life and shocking death ball he basically took three life for no reason and his turn was kind of over after that and i had like way too much pressure coming back so there is actually one card that me and you talked about in that matchup specifically in the u6 matchup that kind of really destroys this deck, which uh, is the four drop Awaken Sister Kale, right? But you have like sideboard tech that kind of answers that. So I guess we'll just jump over the sideboard. So talk about that card versus this deck and why you sideboarded Zarbon. Yeah, Zarbon. So um, I was actually like, I was actually talking to my friend, uh, Nick Martinez about this the night before. He was like, uh, yeah, I was thinking about playing the deck or whatever, but Kale, I kind of misses it up. And so I read Kale. And I was like, I'm a vanilla two player, so like I kind of knew about Zarbon already, and uh, it's on color. Um, so I like I, I read Kel like twice, and I was just like, uh, I guess I just won't like have my card in rest mode or whatever. And I was like, oh, I can just restand it with Zarbon. So I was like, yeah, this is like great now. Like my opponent won't be expecting it. <laughs> like he'll swing, he'll like he'll he'll combo into play the Zarbon, thinking that everything's okay, and then I'll just play Zarbon, uh, like combo Zarbon or whatever. And just restand my guy before um, Kale comes into play and like pops it. And basically, like they can't re like that matchup becomes very very easy if they can't remove your uh, remove your um, your six drop on board. Like 
the Khalifa is no longer like that lethal. The Kale is no longer lethal. They kind of like don't have any answers to it. I think the only answer they have would be um, turn one if they charged the blue and left and left it up for desperate measures. Yeah, the ideal play like when your opponent, if you think your opponent is gonna desperate measures you, is to just have a freezes call because you want to charge yellow turn two, and then have either the practice the sacrifice or mechanism, so you can like play freezes call and if they mechanism that. Then, I mean, if they uh, desperate measures that, then you still have your backup play with sacrifice or mechanism to like go into your chain. Gotcha. So that's kind of how you play around that. Yeah. Gotcha. Then we have two Fly Nimbus, two Roshi for some more negates, four West Kai's for the eight matchups, and then four Serious Bomb. That is a serious number of Serious Bombs. So why did you decide to put yeah. four in the side deck? Um, so this side deck, Broly's, Broly's side deck card is like, side deck is very, very hard to do. Um, the Roshis and the Nimbus never came into effect. Um, the West Kai's were really for, uh, they were really just for the Broly 8 version. Because if you like, stop, if you stop their big Bardock 8, then they kind of don't have really anything to pressure you with that you're worried about. And then, uh, the, but the remote series were, um, they were just for the mirror match in case I played it. Um, but the matchup is like, if you go first in the mirror, it's kind of free anyway. So it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. You just like will go up your your chain of your own and just pop their chain along the way. Yeah, you so. got a really big advantage there. So overall, I mean, that's the deck. I think it's a really cool take on um on starter deck Broly. Like whether you want to play this, uh, which is like more controlly ish, or you want to play the more aggressive version. But Daylon, uh, any final things you want to say about Nationals? Anything you want to uh, shout out? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so I'm throwing my own tournament. Um. The Tournament of Power is going to be a $10,000 main event, cash prizing, not any vouchers or any little, like, store cards and stuff like that. And I will hand you, like, cash. <laughs> um, ben, is, <laughs> ben is going to be um, a $6,000 3v3 event the same way um, you're getting handy cash, um, except the 3v3 event, unlike the main event, is going to be a no uh, no ban list, no errata tournament, so... I'm really excited for that. I think that's probably the more exciting event. I know the main event will be um be really, really nice because I'm expecting I'm actually expecting a pretty big turnout. And it's if it's over um if it's over five hundred and twelve people, I'm actually considering doing a nine round top six four. So I think that I think that would be very, very, very competitive to have like a, I think it will be the first top sixty four the game's ever had. So but if it's not over five hundred, um I mean, it's going to be nine rounds regardless in top 32 because that obviously did a lot of people dirty this year at Nats. Um, that forward was pretty wild. One of the Hill Twins going 6-1-1 one, and, one and not topping is – that's pretty insane for the biggest event of the year. So, But um, I wanted to have that event hosted. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to more than likely be in Las Vegas. Um, and I made sure to get, like, room blocks – so that uh, at the hotel that it's at, so that people can get like a discounted room um, if you use the uh, Tournament of Power code that I'm going to get once I get done with the hotel package. But um, it's going to be a big event. Um, I got a lot of more stuff in store. Um, it'll, be a, it'll be a bunch of details coming out. Um, I'm also hosting it with a team. I'm not, not spoiling which team it is yet. Um, could be, it could be become a, a long-time partnership and we could possibly take deep dbs into the future so very excited about that dude i am so excited too and guys listening trust me that you're not gonna want to miss this tournament daylon has very very big visions for what this tournament's gonna be and the future of dbs so make sure you guys attend make sure you guys stay tuned for more information on that thank you daylon and we'll see you guys next time thank you